HSV is the leading cause of viral encephalitis. In the post-neonatal period, it's almost always HSV1 rather than HSV2, which more commonly causes meningitis. Although in neonates, it can be caused by HSV1 or HSV2, but we're not going to talk about neonates here. The first time you get infected with HSV is called primary infection, and when it reactivates from sensory neurons, it's called a recurrent infection, and it turns out that encephalitis can happen in either case. Although you don't need to have had symptomatic mucocutaneous disease in order to get HSV encephalitis. How does HSV get into the CNS? Well, this is interesting. You might remember HSV gets to the sensory ganglia by transporting retrograde from the skin, and then recurrent infection happens when it transports anterograde back to the skin. Well, the way it gets to the brain is to transport in the other direction to the CNS. And usually this occurs along the olfactory or trigeminal nerves. Note, again, we're talking about adults here. When HSV gets to the brain, it causes meningoencephalitis or encephalitis. And the encephalitis causes hemorrhagic necrosis. Because of the hemorrhage, it's common to see red blood cells in addition to the white blood cells on lumbar puncture. And to diagnose it, you do PCR on the CSF for HSV1 and 2, and this has excellent sensitivity and specificity. How does it present? Well, usually people with HSV encephalitis present pretty acutely within a week of developing symptoms, and the symptoms are going to be fever and headache, and because it's encephalitis, focal neurological signs and symptoms. Now, what distinguishes HSV encephalitis from other causes? There are a few key things. So first of all, generally it's severe, more severe than many other forms of viral encephalitis. HSV is unlikely to get to the brain. Most people with herpes don't get encephalitis, but if it does get to the brain, it causes very severe disease. Without treatment, 70% of these patients are going to die. But if you treat early, only 20% are going to die. And this is why if you ever think HSV encephalitis is even a possibility, you start treatment with acyclovir right away. Something else that distinguishes HSV is that it targets the temporal lobes of the brain. And you can actually see that on images like MRI. And because it targets the temporal lobes, it has certain neurological effects. The temporal lobes govern emotion and help make new memories. And as a result, damage to them can lead to bizarre behavior, such as manic symptoms, and sometimes amnesia. And otherwise, HSV also often causes seizures. 